Section 12 of the Wisdom of the Ancients. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Wisdom of the Ancients, a series of mythological fables by Francis Bacon. Orpheus or Philosophy, explained of natural and moral philosophy. Introduction. The fable of Orpheus, though trite and common, has never been well interpreted, and seems to hold out a picture of universal philosophy, for to this sense may be easily transferred what is said of his being a wonderful and perfectly divine person, skilled in all kinds of harmony, subduing and drawing all things after him by sweet and gentle methods and modulations for the labors of orpheus exceed the labors of hercules both in power and dignity as the works of knowledge exceed the works of strength fable orpheus having his beloved wife snatched from him by sudden death resolved upon descending into the infernal regions to try if by the power of his harp he could reobtain her and in effect he so appeased and soothed the infernal powers by the melody and sweetness of his harp and voice that they indulged him the liberty of taking her back on condition that she should follow him behind and he not turn to look upon her till they came into open day but he through the impatience of his care and affection and thinking himself almost past danger at length looked behind him whereby the condition was violated and she again precipitated to pluto's regions from this time orpheus grew pensive and sad a hater of the sex and went into solitude where by the same sweetness of his harp and voice he first drew the wild beasts of all sorts about him so that forgetting their natures they were neither actuated by revenge cruelty lust hunger or the desire of prey but stood gazing about him in a tame and gentle manner listening attentively to his music nay so great was the power and efficacy of his harmony that it even caused the trees and stones to remove and place themselves in a regular manner about him when he had for a time and with great admiration continued to do this at length the thracian women raised by the instigation of bacchus first blew a deep and hoarse-sounding horn in such an outrageous manner that it quite drowned the music of orpheus and thus the power which as the link of their society held all things in order being dissolved disturbance reigned anew each creature returned to its own nature and pursued and preyed upon its fellow as before the rocks and woods also started back to their former places and even orpheus himself was at last torn to pieces by these female furies and his limbs scattered all over the desert but in sorrow and revenge for his death the river helicon sacred to the muses hid its waters underground and rose again in other places explanation the fable receives this explanation the music of orpheus is of two kinds one that appeases the infernal powers the other that draws together the wild beasts and trees the former properly relates to natural and the latter to moral philosophy or civil society the reinstatement and restoration of corruptible things is the noble work of natural philosophy and in a less degree the preservation of bodies in their own state or a prevention of their dissolution and corruption and if this be possible it can certainly be effected no other way than by proper and exquisite attemperations of nature as it were by the harmony and fine-tuning of the harp but as this is a thing of exceeding great difficulty the end is seldom obtained 
and that probably for no reason more than a curious and unseasonable impatience and solicitude and therefore philosophy being almost unequal to the task can cause to grow sad and hence betakes itself to human affairs insinuating into men's minds the love of virtue equity and peace by means of eloquence and persuasion thus forming men into societies bringing them under laws and regulations and making them forget their unbridled passions and affections so long as they hearken to precepts and submit to discipline and thus they soon after build themselves habitations form cities cultivate lands plant orchards gardens etc so that they may not improperly be said to remove and call the trees and stones together and this regard to civil affairs is justly and regularly placed after diligent trial made for restoring the mortal body the attempt being frustrated in the end because the unavoidable necessity of death thus evidently laid before mankind animates them to seek a kind of eternity by works of perpetuity character and fame it is also prudently added that orpheus was afterwards averse to women and wedlock because the indulgence of the married state and the natural affections which men have for their children often prevent them from entering upon any grand noble or meritorious enterprise for the public good as thinking it sufficient to obtain immortality by their descendants without endeavouring at great actions and even the works of knowledge though the most excellent among human things have their periods for after kingdoms and commonwealths have flourished for a time disturbances seditions and wars often arise in the din whereof first the laws are silent and not heard and then men return to their own depraved natures whence cultivated lands and cities soon become desolate and waste and if this disorder continues learning and philosophy is infallibly torn to pieces so that only some scattered fragments thereof can afterwards be found up and down in a few places like planks after a shipwreck and barbarous time succeeding the river helicon dips underground that is letters are buried till things have undergone their due course of changes learning rises again and shows its head though seldom in the same place but in some other nation end of section twelve